In this video, we are going to be looking at how the uh, validation controls in ASP.NET actually perform the validation. Uh, if you have been very observant, you will have seen that uh, every time we click the button and there is a uh, validation errors on our page, uh, the page is not actually posted to the server. Um, and maybe I should demonstrate an example for you. Uh, let me go to Visual Web Developer and run the uh, website that we created in the previous video and uh, if I should click now as you can see there is no uh, forms so the button click event is not uh, sent to the server because uh, there is an error so which is very quick so because if we add uh, I mean I'm gonna be talking about this in a minute but if we have sent it to the server so that means the information of travel to the server and come back then tell us that uh, we have an error on our page so but this one is very instantaneous and is um, is done because of for user experience so that user can have a very good experience when they're using our website so they don't have to wait for the uh the message from the server so validations are performed client side and server side when we say client we mean inside the browser so the browser is the client so it's like client and server so the client is requesting information from the server and the server is providing information to the client so this is the browser so validations are performed both on the browser and on the server side for many reasons in order to prevent the round trip to the server before the user is informed about the errors in the form field ASP.NET use the built-in JavaScript uh, processor of web browsers to validate the data before it allows it to be sent to the server. So the pre the previous demonstration I did, uh, and that's because um, the JavaScript inside actually, I should show you the, let's run the website again. So you can see the, all the JavaScript that is uh, produced. So we uh, click on this uh, button again. We get all this error. So let's view our page source. Page source. As you can see, we have a lot of the JavaScript. If you know JavaScript, you can see that uh, this now is a JavaScript. And we have JavaScript for validation example. We have another script, type equals to JavaScript here for validation example. We have all these uh, validation on submit uh, func JavaScript functions. So you can see that we have a lot of JavaScript on the page. So if we scroll down, we get more type equals to JavaScript, you know, uh, evaluation function required field validator or evaluate is valid. So we have a lot of JavaScript that has been uh, rendered to the, to the web browser. So which makes it uh, uh, a very good user experience because when you have a good uh, user experience, then you can be assured that uh, your user they will uh, stay more on your page. So let's go back to the presentation so um, the client side validation can be turned off by assigning a value of false to the enable client script property of the validation control so let's take a look at that so we want to turn off the enable client script so let's run our page oh actually we don't need to run our page we want to look at the um, property so if we select any of this we can turn off the enable client script so this indicates whether to perform validation on the client in up level browser so as you can see we can actually disable the uh, uh, JavaScript uh, validation for this uh, validation control uh, it is a very bad idea to do that um, maybe there might be cases where you want to do that and maybe you you know that your website is only going to be used on uh, uh, maybe devices that the browser doesn't support of uh, JavaScript say the mobile devices so um, that is what I want to show you about that so let's go back to uh, if you turn off the JavaScript validation there's another way data are validated before being processed and that is by using the page dot in page dot is valid property of ASP.NET so uh, if you think about it uh, say for example the user has turned off the JavaScript in the web browser or the web browser doesn't support uh, what doesn't support JavaScript at all so we also have to validate the data you have to always validate the data 
on the uh, server as well so in because you can never rely on this is more reliable than the client side because the user actually have power over v this type of validation which is the javascript whereas the server is a must it must be performed on the server so the validation controls have a way of telling the page there are no errors so each validation control has a way of telling the page there are no errors each of the validation control has the its valid property each of the validation control I've introduced to you, they have a property known as is valid, and this property will return true whenever there are no errors to display. So if there is no error for a validation control to display, they return uh, true. So successful validation controls will have the is valid property return false. No, this is wrong. Unsuccessful. Unsuccessful validation controls we have the is valid property to return false so so also the page that is valid property is used to check to see if all the validation controls have returned true so this property will check to see if all the validation controls in a form has returned true so if all the validation controls has been successfully uh, validated and the result is okay so if this is true then you are sure that all your validation are successful if not then you want to return the user back to the form and not process the data so that means what you want to do is uh, I'm going to show you an example in a minute uh, otherwise you'll be storing bad data in your database so if we go back to the VWD 2008 what I've actually done here is uh, you remember the previous uh, one that we written we do not do anything with the, uh, with this submit button so now I've actually write something so this is all you require you have to make sure that you include and it's always a good habit to actually have it in a double quote because the reason why I didn't add it double quote was because uh, it's a one line statement if it's more than one line if it's two three lines you have to include everything in a quote so that's uh, C sharp so I'm not meant to be teaching you that <laughs> so what i have done here is i have actually say if uh, page is valid so that means if all the uh, validation controls have been successfully validated uh, that means if all the text field or the input field have been successfully validated then i want to process this uh, message so it's always a good idea to include any message that you want to process from the uh, from the uh, from the form to make sure that you include it in page that is valid because if it's not validated then it can return the user back to the form so um, if we run this page now I mean it doesn't do anything special it just said uh, so let's see so if I do well, I've got all the errors now with the built-in JavaScript the built-in JavaScript is actually so what we can do is let's go ahead and turn off let's let's do something let's turn off all the uh, let's turn off enable script enable client where is it enable client script let's turn that off the false for the next one let's turn that to false as well the third one come on let's turn it to false and lastly for the pin let's turn that to false so let's run our page so what this would do is uh, as you can see it's it's not as quick as uh, uh, if we use a JavaScript built-in JavaScript so if we click on it it will send the information as you see it send the information to the server then came back and still give us the Required with our validation errors, so that is the round trip that we want to prevent by using the built-in uh, JavaScript validation. So, uh, will that actually output a JavaScript on our page? Yeah, we still have JavaScript. Uh, okay, uh, validation. Okay, uh, as you can see, we do not have all this JavaScript that we had initially. We had a lot of JavaScript all over the page. The uh, JavaScript that we have now is the, the 
do post back we do not have any of the validation uh, JavaScript like we had before so this is the difference in using I always encourage you to use this when you're writing for you know browsers any normal web browser it's always good to have the two turned on so let's go ahead now and turn them back on before we continue with our example we just want to demonstrate that to you so let's um, to enable script we want to turn that to true for this one turn it to true now that we have uh, successfully turned everything back to the way it was so that we can enable JavaScript uh, um, so let's see you can see the response is quicker now it doesn't have to go back to the server so now let's input a value let's say D let's say 29 and let's say one two three four so what would this would do is uh, the form will be submitted and we're going to get data processed successfully so uh, it's always good to uh, also include the uh, the code that you want to process uh, after the validation it's always good to include it inside the is page is valid property so that is what I want to point your attention to and uh, I'll see you in the next video thank you